Hey everyone, it's Dawn here, and I am working on uh, replacing the carburetor um, on my Onan 4000 micro quiet uh, generator. It is 4KY FA 2600K, spec K. Um, Amazon carb over here, I'm trying to remove that one. Um, I removed this tray here with the two torque screws just because um, I had to do that earlier when I was making the video about installing the f uh, emergency fuel shutoff valve over here. Um, so don't worry about that. I took the ground off. The ground wire was oh, attached to there. Um, doo -doo -doo, whoa. So ground goes there. So I took off the ground. It's still plugged into the power over there. Um, took off the fuel line, which is this and then took off the air filter, which is a wing nut to take off the cover. Then the fuel filter, I mean, it's not fuel, the air filter itself, um, that is held on by another wing nut. These are the wing nuts. So took that off and then it is uh, two 10 millimeter bolts that go through from inside and it goes through here and you would see that in this channel for this one and then there's another one on the back side that's exactly like this so this thing is sitting in here like this inside of this you have this much room here to work um and it is this is deep so i thought that uh oh my my deep well 10 millimeter socket would work nope doesn't work because i can't get my uh, doo -doo, where's my thingy i can't get my thingy onto here because it is inside of this so i need to extend it out further to be able to attach my ratchet uh ratchet thingy wrench on it right so i use this um this is an extender i love this extender my first time being able to use it um, this is a small 10 millimeter over here into the extender and then another extender on top of that so that I could attach, where is my thingy? Oh my gosh, here it is. These are the thingies I was talking about so that I could attach this. So I would put this all the way in here and then it would still stick out by this much. And then once I, fa ew, what is that? Oh, it's a piece of broken foam. Yeah, gross. Then I could attach this onto here and then I could torque it. So um, this worked perfectly and it has to be this long. Wait, do I have a measure thingy? Yes, I have a tape measure over here. So five and a half inches long was the proper length to be able to remove um, this screw. And that's how it would look like. The screw would sit right about here inside. Um, and let's see, I tried my flexible extender, but this unfortunately doesn't work under torque and these were torqued down. So, um, that's why I needed to use this. So this was a tool. Um, so I got both bolts out and good. They're exactly the same. Oh my gosh. I almost panicked. It's like, which one goes where? No, they're exactly the same. So I got those out and now... I need to get this out. And what we want to watch out for is um, when it, are these thingies because when one side closes, then the other side opens. So, and we have to slide this thing out, but these gasket thingies are coming out with it. So it should be fine. Let's see if we can this out actually my whole thingy over here is coming out with it okay so it's coming out with it because mm. all right so I'm going to go inside and see if I can feel that car or I can open it here and then I can see it and I can close it 
there we go. So I closed it so that I could get over that lip. And there, we are out. Okay. So, ah, nice. I wanted to take a look at this. Um, so here, those were the 10 millimeters and they're deep down inside. So what I could, <laughs> I wanted to see this because I wanted to see this so bad when I was sticking my finger in there and I couldn't um, see, why is there oil on this? So th this is what I was talking about. There was oil in my, um, and that was, I think that was part of the problem too, was that somehow I think it got overloaded with oil and then, but now I can finally clean all this out. So that's good. All right, so um, so what you need to do and what I was feeling and what helped was for me to close my eyes and then just feel. What I felt was that feel along this lip and then it's right there in there. So I, I'm going in blind, right? But I'm going in blind, I feel for this lip and then I would just slip down and then feel and keep turning until I felt it lock onto something, then I knew I was on the bolt. And then I would turn and turn, turn, and then I, I knew I was on it. So feel for that lip and go down. It, it'll be right, it'll be right in that, like that. So, all right, so now we know that this needs to go on here like this. Okay, so I'll take this out. <clears throat> take this out. And I need to get this off, actually, because I need this black thingy. And it doesn't want to come off for me. It sucks. Huh, while we're here, let's take a look. I don't see anything yucky in here. All right, um, so then there's this wire too. And oh my gosh. You see how short this wire is? I really want this wire to be longer. And if I was more capable at um, wiring, oh, wait, why is there so much excess over here? Can I, can I draw upon some of this excess? Because this is such a pain in the butt to like plug in because it's kept way back here behind all of this. So that is on my wish list for this wire to be longer so that this is easier to connect and disconnect. Oh, this oil. I don't think I have a current oil problem. I think this is uh, remnants of before. All right, so all of this is disconnected. I just need to disconnect these thingies. Hmm, what is the best way? This little one goes to this. And that one is out. This one is out. So these two go to the first one. And this longer one goes to this one. Huh, interesting. So now I just need to take this off because I need to reuse this black piece over here. And it is sealed. That's lovely. All right, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Um, let's see. What did I do? I took off the, oops, here. On the old one, I took off that gasket thingy. So now I gotta put everything uh, back together again with the new carb. Hmm, let's see. So this one with the spring, actually, I don't know. I don't know what's the proper order to do this in. Let's put this one over here and then put the spring on and then hook this one on. All right, so these, D 
LEDs are now all on. Okay, then we need this gasket on here. And I need more hands because I need to get the other gasket on as well. I'm back. I got the gaskets back on, got my extender. I have the back bolt already through. Um, I am turning this one now. Can you see? See how this one turns? So that is me back here. So let's get um, let's get my thingy onto here so I can get this tightened on. In this tiny little space, the ratcheting is an absolute must. Oh, something that I did is I went ahead and um, pulled out longer over here so now it is so much easier watch and then I still can't do it now I can just do this and I can secure this over here something so it's out of the way but still um easy to get to now I mean this oh my gosh this was such a pain in the butt okay so that is secure that is secure let's get the air filter on go from underneath or not see what I'm talking about stupid design game of Tetris ever. Um, now we gotta find, oh, got it. All right, wing nut. Check. Get this one on. And air cover case. The cutout part goes on the inner back corner. So it'll go on like this. Another wing nut, check. All right, um, let's do our ground wire first. Ground wire is gonna go here, up against the uh, engine is best. Turn this on, all right, let's see what happens. four five six same thing air 36 Oil is up to full, a little under full, but a little over three quarters. Uh, all right, I have no idea what 
what else this could be then. explaining to do so um, I've been told that when I abruptly end my videos it is a little shocking to the audience so I need to have an outro so this is going to be my outro there is a lot of extra stuff going on um, the other day uh, yesterday actually I came out here and um, I had no electricity my um, all my lights they were so dim and then I'm like, what's going on? And then I went around and then um, as I'm flipping on light switches and stuff, it's getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it like shut off completely and there was like no more lights at all. These are just lights, right? So then I started looking around and it turns out that um, my shore power, my plug, my 30 amp plug was unplugged from the extension cord. And I'll show you a picture of how it's set up but um it's uh it's connected to this big housing thing with the plastic cover and then the 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 it's um kind of buried all around with plenty of relief on each side and the plug sits on top of uh my trailer plug sits on top of the outlet on the end of the extension cable and then it has a cover on it so um and that plug was completely out and sitting off to the side, laying on its side, um, inside the box. And the box was shut. So um, apparently I have no idea when it got unplugged. And so it's my motorhome has been running off of just the battery and um, I had no idea. And the battery has been draining, draining, draining until it died, which is bad. Um, and the other thing is I don't have proper batteries um, in this thing you're supposed to have like two house batteries and um, the previous owners didn't know and so they only put one um, one car battery in here so it's kind of ridiculous um, I need to get new batteries but I wanted to wait until batteries is a whole nother world and surprisingly um, before EUC I knew nothing about electric stuff and electric motors and um, electricity and all that is just not a topic that I've ever been on top of so I not even on top of like I don't even get it at all it's all voodoo to me so um, I wanted to spend the time and research and find out like I know that we have the lead iron um, that's super heavy but it's cheap the cheapest ones and they last for a while but you can't discharge them more than 50 percent ideally um often and then you got the amg ones that charge up super quick but you have to be super careful about overcharging them and they need special chargers and then you have the lithium batteries which are like super good all the way around um, and they can discharge and recharge and they have more cycles that they can go through than anyone else um like four or five times but they're also four or five times the cost so they're super expensive um and you know but they're also the lighter ones and i don't know you get more power so i i want to do the lithium ones um but anyways so i have a battery issue i just have one single car battery in here right now um and that is the wrong battery and i got mysteriously unplugged um so what that translates to is I don't know when it got unplugged and what was going on with my whole generator thing is after I installed the new, <laughs> I'm sorry, if you're hearing that, that's, that's my daughter's new rooster who's learning how to crow. And, um, the first time he crowed, it was like this, and I was like, what was that? Was that a peacock? <laughs> I was like, or a monkey? I 
was like, what was that sound? And then I realized, like, oh, the poor little baby rooster is trying to learn how to crow. Now he's getting his crow down, and um, he's very proud of that. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so after I installed the fuel pump and the fuel filter, then it was running. It was running really, really well, but, ooh, you're all covered up, but um, uh, it still had the issue where I... I still had to, when I go to start it, I'd have to blip the throttle and then it would pick up and then it would run. So I call it blipping the throttle because I'm drawing upon my past experiences, which is all motorcycle. And it feels like that. You get out a little blip of the throttle and then it goes, right? So um, anyways, that was the only issue. Otherwise, it was running great. Um, but then the next day when I came out, it wouldn't run at all. It wouldn't turn over. It wouldn't. And then it got progressively worse. And I'm like, what is going on? Am I breaking this thing more than I'm fixing it? Because that's what it feels like. And I was getting super discouraged, um, by this. And I swear I, I'm, uh, <laughs> anyways, so, um, mm. So yesterday was a breakthrough once I realized that I was unplugged and after changing out, um, so, so in this video, you see up to, I've changed out to the new carburetor and then I'm starting it. And then here's the clue. Every time I went to start it, it would get worse and worse and worse until it wouldn't start at all anymore. Right? So that made me remember, well, this morning when I was turning on the lights, the lights kept getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it shut off. And one of the things that I didn't quite understand was I was under the impression when you plug in something, it has full power already immediately as soon as you plug it in. That's what I was expecting for my motorhome plugging it into the extension cord and I have, and I double checked, I have power, the breaker's good, all that stuff. I should have full power right there. But I didn't understand that my motorhome has a 12 volt system and it has to somehow transfer and all that. And then the battery has to charge up. And so, so just plugging, just having myself be plugged in doesn't mean that I have full power other it i guess it has to go through all this other systems and then this is the power that i actually get which will all be solved once i get my good batteries in right but so that's the kind of thing that's unclear to me it's unclear but now at least i'm aware that there is that situation going on so um where i stopped the video i started thinking it's like huh it's getting worse and worse and worse as I go along. It's acting like those lights this morning. So one of the best ways to generate that power, I guess, is to turn on the truck. And then the truck's alternator will kick in and all that stuff. Uh, so I'm still not a really clear about all the, but <laughs> so I turn on the truck. Oh, no, no, no. I'm jumping ahead. So because there wasn't that much change um, when I changed out the carbs, then I went ahead and I actually took it all apart again and I put the original carburetor back in because once I had the carbs in my hand, I could really inspect it and clean it and I could confirm there is nothing up top that would be clogged up. When I earlier, I had taken off the float bowl and cleaned out the float bowl and the altitude adjustment um, screw and the main jet and everything in there. And then I did it again this time. So the, that is the stuff that would be gummed up, that would be fouled. So I had already done that on the, on the old one, so it should be fine. So I put the old one back in because it's the better part. It's the OEM original part. So that's a superior part. So, and I confirmed it should, it, that shouldn't be the issue. So I put the old one back in, fired up again. It won't, it won't turn over at all. It's dead. And I'm like, so frustrated. So 
uh, just disappointed and let down and defeated. I was defeated. And because it's like, change out the fuel pump, the fuel filter, the air filter, the spark plug, the carburetor. I mean, I've, what else is there to do? So, um, <clears throat> and now it won't even, and now it won't even crank, you know, it's like, it's getting worse. How is this? So then I was like, okay, so it's acting like those lights. So I turned on the truck, bam, my generator is running again. It is still doing the thing where I need to blip the throttle. I blip the throttle and then it'll run. But once it's running, it seems to run fine. Now I haven't tried running it longer than like five minutes. Um, because I mean, I'm just standing around doing nothing, but it, when it's running, it sounds great and it doesn't try to die. So, um, <clears throat> I think the only issue is having to blip the throttle. So, um, after, after turning on the truck and then the generator starts up now and it's running great again and all that stuff, then I was like, Oh, renewed hope. And then I had a second wind and then I started researching a little bit more and I posted up in the Onan um, generator forum for some help. And Neo said that it is very common for the choke to be stuck in the wide open position. And you, um, and so see if it's stuck. So then I was like, well, I've been actually looking for close up pictures of how those levers are supposed to be up top. I know people have looked at it and haven't said a thing about it, but I was wondering about that because me having to blip the throttle, which turns out to be the choke. <laughs> and, um, so, so, but I haven't been able to find any close-ups of how it's supposed to be. So, um, so he sent a little short video showing, showing that this is closed and this is open. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, mine is stuck open. So how do I adjust this? And, um, so then I'm still not clear. Um, he said seven millimeter wrench on the other side and turn the dial, which was a little vague, but I'm really bad about asking for help. So, and I've already asked and that was his answer. So I'm not going to press it. So, um, I found another site though of a guy that documented it and that dial on the other side where that wire goes across, the choke wire goes across, it terminates into this um, it seemed like it was a completely sealed little box, um, with a sub seven millimeter bolt, um, nut on it. And, uh, so his little blog said that that dial, um, is tied into temperature. Each one of those notches in there, uh, is about 10 degrees. It should be set to 70 degrees right now, but, um, basically just adjust that until you see that the choke is in the off position when the generator is dead cold. So it is 6 a.m. Uh, 6.18 now. I started this at 6 a.m. Anyways, um, and it's dead cold right now. So um, I'll be able to adjust it down and uh, close that choke. And then we'll see what happens because that would be the very last thing is that if that choke acts properly and does its job, then I should be able to start up. And then uh, that should be the last of my issue. So hopefully that is the last thing, but you know how these things go. It's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's not just one thing that might be wrong. I mean, if you're lucky, then that's what it is. But this is a 17 year old um, coach and the generator is probably that old as well. And it's been sitting and all that. So, you know, for me, it's kind of like, this is what I tell myself to not get discouraged is that it's not that I'm not fixing it. It's just that there could be 10 things wrong 10 things wrong with it and I am going down the list and I'm going down the list and I am fixing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I still have, I still haven't fixed nine and 10. Once I fix nine and 10, then it will be completely fixed. So I just got to keep chasing down each problem and correcting each problem until it's completely fixed. It's not that I'm breaking it. <clears throat> it's not that I'm doing anything wrong. 
It's just that there is a ton of stuff to fix. Um, so, oh God, I'm so sore. I've been sitting cramped up in front of that generator forever. Um, all right. So that's a plan. The other problem is that, um, <clears throat> that rate that outdoor radio that keeps turning on. Well, it turns out that it is turning on and staying on now. So I have an electrical leak on top of my other electrical problems. So I need to go out there. I need to get that thing out of there and I need to stop that electric leak. Um, so I need to do that. Uh, I need to figure out how to even operate my water system. I don't even know how to put water in this thing, um, much less how to, what to do about the black water tank and the, what are the other tanks? Clean water, gray water, and black water. Um, uh, there are some things down there that are loose. I think it's connected to the black water tank thing. And it's not, it doesn't have enough support. So I need to get some supports on those. Um, <clears throat> I still have to finish up the roof up top. There is a lot of condensate um, I noticed this morning and off of both sides of my RV in the front. And, but no bubbling and no leaking inside. So the seals that I've done so far are holding. And, uh, but I do have to go up there and redo them because when I, when I did them the first time, they were, they didn't get to dry and it was super humid. And then we had hurricane Hillary hit and then it was under the tarp. So it was super humid and everything. So it didn't dry completely. I was hoping that it would dry enough to seal and keep, keep my home safe and dry. Um, and then I put the tarp on top of that as a second layer of protection and it, it worked. So I was like, yes, but when I took the tarp off, the wet, um, still kind of not quite cured sealant did stick to the, to the tarp. And when I pulled it off, then it, you know, so I have to go back and do all that, but there's no holes. Well, there were some holes, but I was able to push it down and smooth things out and stuff like that. But uh, yes, I still have to go up there and read, not redo it, but put some more on top, smooth it out, make it all nice again up top. And then, um, and I still have more of that to do. And then on Friday, my big tub of roof coating, um, should come on, come here and then I'll be able to coat the entire thing and have the entire thing fully sealed. So then I won't have to worry about water issues at all anymore. And I'll be super happy. Um, I need to, I need to show you guys a picture here um, of, uh, when I did my horse trailer and I resealed the roof on my horse trailer. And, uh, so I do have a little bit experience of that. It's just a little bit different with this one. Cause with my horse trailer, I had a metal roof. And with this one, I have a vinyl roof, which I still don't understand why people say that. Um, uh, because there it's, if it, if that is a thing, it's one of the most rarest things or something, because no one ever knows what I'm talking about when I see a vinyl roof and I was like, I don't know. That's just what I'm told. Maybe it's a rubber roof. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Will someone please tell me what kind of roof I have? Um, anyways, it's not metal. It's some kind of, um, it's, and I can feel it and I can see it. It's some kind of membrane, either vinyl or rubber membrane, um, on top of, I'm assuming wood planks or wood, some base. Um, so anyways, this is the only plushie I have in here with me right now. Um, I was going to bring, oh, I have, I have a little boba. I was going to bring some more plushies, but we don't have a lot of space in here. So maybe a second little, um, boba plushie would fit well in here, but I think I need more. Um, he's so cute. Anyways. Um, all right. So we have a plan and, uh, I need to learn the water system. I need to reseal the roof. I, oh, I need to reseal the slides. I've ordered the slide thingies. Those will come. I'm not sure when, and then I need to seal up the slides and I still have a lot of other things to fix, but generator, 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 we got to get that working. All right. So thanks for joining me and, um, stay tuned <laughs> for adventures in our RV life. Talk to you later. Bye.